Zomheads. Today we're going to talk about Fear the Walking Dead, Season 2, Episode 4, Blood in the Street. Yes, I am not in my usual location. Mm. I'm in a hotel. I'm at a conference. I'm missing my home. And I did bring a couple Zoms with me. I brought him. Ooh, he looks good. And him. Which, by the way, we are going to do a unboxing this weekend. Em and I went to Toys R Us and we got a small load. And we also went to Best Buy and got a GoPro 4. I'm pretty sure it's a GoPro 4. Uh, for Megacon coming up in like three weeks. I'm so excited. But anyway, back to fear. I just think this episode was so good. I mean, fear is like exponentially improving as we go. I want to start with Strand because I think I might have been right about feeling like he wasn't this evil person. I know he's a little slick and he is a player when it comes to money and property. We know that he met this guy Thomas Abigail in a bar and Thomas Abigail said he was a predator and Strand brought him back to the guy's hotel and put him down in his bed and he passed out because he drank too much. What happened was he went through his uh, billfold, took out credit cards and left the guy and he charged like 30 some thousand dollars uh, of course this guy is a man of power he finds strand brings like his bodyguard or something and they show up at the hotel now thomas is like no i'm not going to do anything to you but i am going to obligate you right so he obligates him so strand has to work for thomas abigail and so we know that the abigail belongs to this family right and so strand winds up in a relationship with thomas they happen to be homosexual and they become lovers. Strand is in this relationship. Is it opportunistic? Is it attraction? Who knows? That's been a lot of chat on the social media is are these guys really like in love or is it an opportunistic relationship? I would say it's probably a little bit of both, you know? But at any rate, Strand is trying to get to Mexico and I thought before in one of the previous videos I told you guys that I thought he was trying to get to Mexico because there's got to be somebody he loves down there or some family down there and he's not going to stop at anything until he gets there right so he's being secretive because he doesn't know who he can trust and his one mission his one mission and it would be your mission too if you had family somewhere is to get your ass to where they're at they also talk about Strand's backstory. His father raised him. His mother left. His father was a strip mall preacher. And from the way Strand's talking, it seems like his father wasn't very successful. So Nick, they show him swimming, and he's tied like a bag onto his ankle. So he's swimming, swimming, swimming. He gets ashore, and we see this helicopter go over his head. And then we see the bits of a wall. Okay, he's at the border of Mexico right? He's not in Mexico. He's on the other side of Mexico. And there's the wall, Trump's wall. Who knew? And then he gets to these, this tent village and it's like, save us, help us all laid out in shirts and clothes and all that. But it's abandoned. It's not full of zoms. We don't even see but one zom in that little tent village, but it looked eerie. So Nick's like still testing out his skills. He's banging on a water bottle to bring out any zombies that there, that might be there. He's hiding in this tent. He seals it up just so that the mesh is there and the zombie comes face to face face and he can't get through. So then Nick grabs the, the Zom and he kills him. Very good to keep a barrier between them because he's not really sure what he's doing yet, right? He's still testing stuff up. And he got some in the abdomen and he takes his blood and rubs it all over him like Nivea. And so this is his camouflage, but he's not sure it works yet. When he gets to the community of houses, he sees this lady Zom and she's kind of like walking up. And so he takes on the body, um, movements of the zombie because he's not really sure his camouflage is going to work he thinks it will because he was very successful at the beach when he walked right up to that other zombie and was face to face with him but he still has some doubt so he takes on the behavioral movements of the zombie and he walks right past her and he kind of stops he's like yeah okay now i know this really does work so he's going to meet thomas's his lover his friend or at least one of the guys that worked for thomas and as he's going through looking for him 
because he got the directions from Strand. We see the symbols. The same symbols are on the dro their door, garage, garage door things. Garage doors and the doors that we saw at their housing complex when the government went to them. So we know that the government was also at this housing complex and that they had put symbols on their doors. So they went through the same thing that the other people went through. So, so far we know that various parts of California, the government was there. So he finds the guy that he's looking for and they, you know, he's worried about his vehicle. He wants Nick to shower off because he's all, you know, camouflaged with his own blood. And, you know, it's kind of like where they're at right now. It hasn't really hit them, the full impact. He's still worried about his vehicle. I mean, he's got all this luggage, all this stuff with him. And they run off to the beach and they come to this area where the guy goes down this rope and it's another floaty thing. And I really thought he was going to leave Nick standing there, but he doesn't. We know that because they're on the boat together when they come up to the Abigail after Abigail was taken over by Jack. Yes, Jack is here. And let's go into that. So we see the Abigail and we see Chris, he's on the dock, uh, dock or deck, deck, he's on the deck and he's got the gun and I guess he's supposed to be patrolling and this floaty boat comes in with a pregnant woman and a couple guys. And so they're like, oh no, we're good. Let us on board. And Chris is like, dad, do I shoot? Dad, do I shoot? You know, he's looking for his father to guide him because he doesn't know how to react. And I mean, just moments ago, Alfia and Chris were talking about dating in Mexico and their lives. So when the people show up to board the boat, you know, Chris, he's not really sure what he should do. Because the old rules are kind of still applying, maybe, he's not sure. Or is he supposed to react differently than how he would react before the apocalypse? And so the people board the boat and the pregnant woman was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in pain. And the guys were like, oh, we're good people. And so Strand sees them and he sees them and he doesn't make his presence known. And actually he goes and he grabs his gun and he made a comment that I found very interesting. He said, he said like something like stupid paranoid or something like that. So it's almost like he's talking to himself like, okay, guy, you're kind of stupid, you're paranoid, but he winds up leaving on the floaty thing. And so then these good people, they turn bad. The pregnant girl, she's in another room with Maddie who's trying to bandage her leg up and she attacks Maddie and knocks Maddie out and binds her up. And then the guys, they turn their guns on uh, the rest of them and bind them up. And Alicia, she's like, Jack? You know, she's hearing the voice. And she's following the voice and she sees him and she's like, Jack? And so they acknowledge each other. And so, sorry guys, I had to do a conference call. Um, it's getting crazy around here. So I don't even know where I left off and I know the cameras probably moved. Um, and so we know Jack was coming, right? We knew that from before. And so now he's here and Jack is a henchman. He's not even the boss guy, he's the henchman. He's the one that carries out orders. and. So we know that Connor, Connor's the boss, he's coming later, and that they set situations up so that these people can overtake different resources that other people have and probably destroy them. They're probably the people that overturned that boat we saw at the, I think it was at the premiere with those people that were turning into Zoms, the floaters all around. They're probably the ones that did that. So they're not trustworthy. And our survivors are trying to figure out like what to do. You know, so they come up with different ideas, like Daniel is trying to get his hands untied in the straps. And Travis, he takes that crowbar and he hides it behind the couch. And, and so Jack tells Connor that, you know, um, the boat's safe to board, come on, uh, it's secure. And so Connor and his people arrive and they take Travis with them and they leave in a floaty boat. And so Nick sees that you know, his family is not out on the boat. He sees strangers there. And so he tells the man, there's people on the boat with guns and stuff and I don't know them. So the guy looks through the binoculars and then he hands it back. And so they wind up taking them out. And so taking out a couple of them on the deck allowed our survivors inside to overtake the other few that there were. And there's, of course, we saw one guy, the smarty pant, uh, smart alecky guy, who told Chris, well, if you have to think about shooting somebody, that somebody should already be dead. 
All right, Smarty Pants, he's still alive. We're going to find out what happened to him at the next episode. You know, our group is focusing on the wrong person. They're focusing on Strand as being the enemy, but Strand is not the enemy. I really still say this. He's not the enemy. He's trying to get to Mexico because somebody he loves is there. And so they're focusing on Strand, and they're not looking at the real threat, which is the other people. The other people are the threat. I mean, Strand's not a dummy. He knows that having people around him is going to help him get there. Because he doesn't have all the skill sets that he needs to make it to where he wants to go. So what is this episode about? This episode is a rude awakening. I know they call it the blood in the streets, but I call it rude awakening. Wake up, guys. Hello. Wake up. Realize where you're at. The rules have changed. Things aren't going to get any better. You're going to have to fight your way through this. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This weekend, I'm going to do some unboxings of the Pro GoPro 4 and also some of these awesome, awesome plants versus zombies, guys, that we got at Toys R Us. See you later. Bye.